Hello everybody, my name is Mansoor Suhail. I'm an accountant and an enrolled agent operating out of Scarborough, Ontario, Canada. I am the owner at The Accounting and Tax. This video presentation is for educational purposes only. So I am going to talk about sources of law and system design for international taxation in Canada. Introduction. The ITA Income Tax Act is the primary source of income tax law in Canada. ITA explains Canadian tax jurisdiction and provides rules for determining tax liability for residents and non-residents. International taxation in Canada strictly depends upon ITA. There is no requirement to apply any other source of law. Transactions are usually characterized in relation to their legal form. Taxpayers can arrange their activities in a way that would minimize their tax liability. Canadian tax system must interact and compete with foreign tax system. Canada has entered into many double taxation treaties, the most important of which is the treaty with the United States. Tax treaties help prevent double taxation of cross-border income. Canada shares international tax base with other countries through bilateral tax treaties. Canadian tax treaties have a common structure and a high level of conformity that is based on the model treaties developed by Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, that is OECD, and the United Nations, UN. Canada has also signed tax information exchange agreements with some tax haven countries that do not have a tax system. The purpose of these agreements is to enable Canada to obtain taxpayers' information from these countries. Tax treaties help us confirm a particular tax jurisdiction. Canadian international tax law tries to balance objectives of equity, neutrality, administrative efficiency, and international competitiveness. Equity is usually defined as horizontal equity and vertical equity. Persons in similar circumstances bear the same taxes under horizontal equity, whereas persons in different circumstances bear different taxes. Foreign taxes paid by a taxpayer or foreign income reduces taxpayers' ability to pay. Canadian tax system therefore allows to reduce Canadian tax liability by using foreign tax credits. As a neutrality concept, non-residents who invest in Canada or indulge in a business activity in Canada should be taxed the same as residents who are earning same kind of income. IT rules for international taxation are far more complex and difficult to understand because these involve jurisdictional issues and complex international business transactions. Canadian international tax system consists of outbound and inbound rules. The outbound rules deal with earnings of foreign income by individuals, corporations, partnerships, and trusts who are resident of Canada. The inbound rules deal with taxation of non-residents who earn income in Canada. Non-residents can be involved in conducting activities in Canada just like residents or by earning investment income by dealing in stocks, bonds or receiving rental income. Income earned is usually active income or passive income. Active income is when taxpayer conducts a business activity or earns employment income. Passive income is a result of earning dividends, interest, rent or royalties. 
Active income is usually taxed in the country where it is earned. Active income is taxed under Part 1 and passive income is taxed under Part 13. Corporations are recognized as separate legal entities by the Canadian tax system. However, branch is not. In case of inbound transactions, corporations result in two levels of taxation on corporate earnings. First tax is imposed on the corporation earnings and second tax is imposed when a corporation distributes dividends to its foreign shareholders. Foreign corporations earning income outside Canada are not subject to Canadian taxation. However, if this income is distributed as dividends to Canadian shareholders, it is taxable. Because distribution of dividends is not mandatory, Canadian tax can be deferred till the dividends are distributed. Part 1 and Part 13 of the ITA deal with inbound rules. Employment income, business income and certain capital gains are dealt in Part 1. Taxpayers must file a tax return and pay tax just like residents. Taxpayers can deduct cost and expenses for calculating net taxable income. If income falls within the Canadian jurisdiction, tax treaties do not affect determination of tax liability. Part 13 deals with passive income earned by non-residents. Dividends, interest, rent, royalties, etc. Under the rules, Part 13 tax is imposed on gross payments. Payer must withhold 25% tax. This can be reduced between 10% to 15% under tax treaties. Part 1 of the ITA mostly covers rules for outbound transactions. According to Section 3, income is defined as all income earned from sources inside or outside Canada. There is a difference in active and passive income. If a Canadian resident earns a foreign income directly, it must be included in calculating worldwide income. If taxes are paid in foreign country, a taxpayer can claim a foreign tax credit. If a non-resident corporation carries a business in Canada, it will be taxed in the same way as resident corporation would. If a Canadian resident corporation is earning a foreign income, it is taxable in Canada. Passive income is usually treated with preference for residents. A taxpayer who earns passive income may not have a direct connection between the taxpayer and where the income is earned. Under the inbound rules, if Canada is the source country for passive income, Canadian sources must withhold 25% and remit it to Canada Revenue Agency. Under the outbound rules, any foreign passive income earned by Canadian residents is subject to taxes in Canada and are eligible for foreign tax credit for up to 15%. The active and passive income helps determine jurisdiction. A fundamental concept in international taxation is determination of residence. Any person in the world can be classified as resident or a non-resident of Canada. Another fundamental concept in international taxation is source of income. Income needs to be classified as Canadian source or foreign source for income tax purposes. Canadian source income earned by a resident or non-residents is taxable in Canada. Foreign source income is not taxable in Canada. ITA considers corporations as a person and a taxpayer. Limited liability companies are hybrid entities that are treated as partnerships in one country and a corporation in another country. 
Debt and equity financing are treated separately under Income Tax Act. Interest paid to shareholders is taxable, whereas dividends paid to shareholders are not taxable. Hybrid investments can be treated as debt in one country and equity in another. These can be used as an instrument for international tax planning. Thank you very much for listening.